Hi there, this is David Hocker. I want to tell you how glad we are to have you here joining with us in the worship of God's Word. Uh, this service is being led on behalf of the Morgantown and Point Pleasant Cumberland Presbyterian Churches, and we hope that you can tune in each Sunday. Uh, we will, next Sunday on Father's Day, be gathering together for the first time in the sanctuaries there. And so we invite you to come and celebrate Father's Day with us and, and children and, and neighbors. Uh, if you want to come and help celebrate Father's Day with us, uh, our Sunday school is at 10 and our worship is at 11. And uh, we just hope that you can be there and be with us then. Uh, our scripture this morning uh, comes from several different places, uh, but first of all, uh, we want to go to Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. I'm going to be reading out of the New NIV version. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment commandment and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself worry is inconsistent with our faith in God and therefore unreasonable as well as sinful says John MacArthur in his commentary on the New Testament let's go to the Lord in prayer Almighty God and Heavenly Father we come before you asking you O oh Lord that you would Unite our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and our spirits together with you, O Lord, that we might worship you, Lord, as we hear from heaven your word of love and mercy and grace, Lord, that we might follow you in obedience, Lord, and that we might be saved because we believe in you, Lord Jesus, as our Savior. God, we thank you for this wonderful world that you've given us, this beauty that surrounds us. We thank you for uh, all of the summer flowers that are coming and, and all the leaves on the trees. But most of all, we thank you for all of the creation that you made, especially your Son, Jesus the Christ, who came to live and die and rise again amongst us in order that we might have eternal life. And we thank you, Lord Jesus that you were obedient even unto death. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are with us even now. Lord, we pray for those that are on the cutting edge of the healing arts, the doctors and nurses and, and CNAs and uh, technicians and uh, respiration therapists, everybody that's just working in the midst of all this sickness. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you for uh, those that have been healed, Father. Continue to watch over those that are ill. And Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, we pray that you might comfort them in these moments and in the days ahead in order that they might know that you are the loving God. And so uh, we just pray for our country, O oh Lord. We pray that in the midst of all this chaos and the crisis of the health pandemic, Lord, and then all of this uh, reckless chaos, lawlessness that's going on in our land, Father. We pray that you might uh, quiet people's spirits and hearts and look toward heaven for your guidance. And then, Father, I just ask humbly, as I know how, to take me out of the way, O oh Lord and that I might be nothing but a faithful pipeline of your word to your people for this day. It's in Christ Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Uh, it's pretty interesting here that <clears throat> we need to love our neighbor as ourselves as we love God. And, and there's some complexity in that uh, there. Uh, but let's go on with some other scripture, and maybe that'll help it settle out for us. Jesus, in the sixth chapter of Matthew, right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, he said, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, and we do have enough trouble every day. We can't chair, uh, change the color of one hair on our head. Uh, I like what Chuck Swindoll, how he uh, summarizes the book of Philippians into six words when he says, worry about nothing, pray about everything. That is that is what we need to be doing. And uh, uh, how are we about to do this? Uh, we go back into the Old Testament in Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Folks, we, <clears throat> we are living in troublesome times. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I was taught in school as a child, uh, back when we could still teach Bible, uh, in school uh, comes from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the Law and the Prophets. Now the Law and the Prophets is what we call the Old Testament. It is everything that was written prior to the Gospels being written down and the New Testament being recorded and canonized. It is guidance for us. The old law was the schoolmaster, as Paul says. But Jesus, in his teaching there, he said that doing the good, the golden rule, that we, we are obeying uh, what is summarized as the law and the prophets. It is the guidance that God has for us to live our lives by. Now, I am so upset over what is going on uh, in, in the world. I'm so upset at the uh, chaos and the rioting. And uh, I think we need to back up and look at things and see what we can do. Uh, well, first of all, I, I think we need to look at this death of this man. Um, that the police stood on his neck and suffocated to death. There is no way that that is just in anybody's mind. Uh, that is a person, I'm not saying he was innocent of all wrongdoing, but he did not appear to be resisting arrest, and uh, they stood on his neck for three minutes after he was unconscious and uh, that's just wrong and we need to be uh, being for justice now one of the things uh, when I was rearing my children uh, was they would be confronted with something and and they'd say well I didn't do anything I didn't do anything and indeed they may not have done anything but our Lord sets a higher level for you and for me. Maybe I should say it this way, for me and for you. We are, uh, instead of not doing something that would hurt somebody else, we are to do things that are beneficial to others. And we need to uh, be doing those things uh, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. That means we need to take a stand. Now, I personally don't believe we need to disband uh, the police, but I do think we need to hold all policemen as accountable as we would hold anybody else if they kill someone. If they do it, and they do it wrongly, then they should have to come before uh, the courts and should have to answer for themselves and we need to stand for justice in America now I want to chase a rabbit maybe but it, it does have a point and that is well where do these laws come from 
Where do our laws come from? And I submit to you that the laws that we have were handed down by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to us to guide us. And that the Son of the living God came amongst us and he gave us a new law, a new covenant to live under. But we should be living under it. We need to realize that law, laws themselves come from God because he wants us to live in a peaceful and orderly world. And we need to stand for that. It's one of the reasons that the founders of this country wanted uh, to have public education. And that is because they uh, wanted men and women and boys and girls to be able to read the Bible, God's Holy Word, and understand it. The first Congresses even made provisions to encourage people uh, to print Bibles in our own land, not have to import them, but to print Bibles in our own land. And we need to get back to where we stand on the right side of God in these things. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, as God's Word says, we need to be wise as serpents and meek as doves. We need to realize that there are times when we get ready to say things, and as the Bible says, we don't need to cast our pearls before swine. There are just some people that are so ignorant that they won't accept anything that we have to say. And so it's best then to uh, keep our mouth shut. And as uh, God's word says, and not be uh, cut up uh, by the pig because the pig doesn't appreciate the pearls. Now, where are we to go with this? Well, we need to encourage one another to live righteous lives. And as we see our brothers and sisters lead righteous lives, we need to encourage them. Way to go. That's good. Do it again. And we need to uh, stand up uh, with those that are leading the legal fights uh, for those that have been abused. And we need to partner with them and say, we want to help. We want this to be right. We want our children, men and women and boys and girls, to grow up and be reared to where we love everybody. Now, that doesn't mean it's always going to be returned to us. And in those cases, we want to make sure that the laws are obeyed. And if laws are not obeyed, we want to see that there is justice justice to protect us and others. Now, again, certainly what happened in Minnesota was not justice for anybody. And we need to be able to revisit that. We need to be able to call our uh, people into question. And it's not just the police. It's the other people. We need to uh, make people stand and deliver uh, and live uh, righteous lives so that we might be able to live in peace and harmony. God wants us to love one another. He came to live and die and rise again in order that we might have eternal life. He came that we might have life and life more abundantly. And I believe that means life peacefully. And if we're going to do that, we have got to be a nation that lives under laws. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, God in heaven, I feel so unworthy uh, this day, uh, but I am glad that I can proclaim your goodness to a lost and dying world, that we just have to run to you crying out, asking you to be our Savior, repenting of our sins, and following you in uh, obedience and in truth. Lord, we do pray for our land.
Father, help us to have peace. Help us to love one another. Help us to guide our families in doing the right things. And Lord, we're going to be sure to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. It's in Christ Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. See you next week.